Good morning. It is filled to the brim and it is Thursday, October 7th. And we are talking about Christ in you, hope of glory, and specifically the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And there's so much to say about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that the Lord has given to us that dwells in us. And he is our teacher. That's what I want to focus in on is that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Let me first read our foundational scripture, Colossians 1, 27. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is part of the inheritance we have received in Christ. And this ministry of the Holy Spirit transforms us to be like Jesus and the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He teaches us the Word of God and He reveals to us the will of God for our lives. You know, Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit would come and He would be our comfort, our guide, and He would help us remember all things and lead us into all truth. The Holy Spirit never leads us into deception. He leads us into all truths. John 14, 26. This is what Jesus says. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. We have the Holy Spirit who is our teacher, and he speaks what the Father is speaking. He does not speak on his own accord. The Holy Spirit speaks what the Father says. John 16, 12 and 13. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Let me talk a little bit about how we hear the Holy Spirit and we are to surrender to the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God. There is this dynamic of the Holy Spirit being our teacher that the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. And as we are, re we have this beautiful uh, thing called the Scriptures that have been given to us to reveal who God is, who reveal the Trinity, to reveal the work of Jesus Christ for our lives. And the Holy Spirit is, one, is the one that leads us and guides us into truth as we're reading Scripture. You know, I've been a part of academia uh, a lot of my career. I have a doctorate. And I have found that there are people in academia, in theological academia, that uh, research scriptures without having the Holy Spirit's guidance. So their takeaways can be very uh, diluted, they can be very off track, because they are not submitted to the Holy Spirit. They actually have a lot of pride and arrogance in their own humanistic understanding of scriptures, and you find that actually the outcome is false teaching. The outcome is very fleshly results. And I have found this in academia. I have found this in the local church. I have found this in people with agendas using scripture to meet their agenda. And this is all wrong. Actually, Paul writes in the New Testament and John as well in his epistles and many others speak about false teaching. And the cults that we have in the world come from twisting and misusing scripture and other spiritual things um, to manipulate and control people. It's from the enemy. Those things are from the enemy. That's why it is so important that we understand we have the spirit of truth who teaches us and guides us into all truth. And the Holy Spirit never contradicts the word of God. Do you hear me? The Holy Spirit never contradicts the Word of God. And too many times people, Christians, get involved in all of these other things, uh, these other teachings outside of Scripture, and they begin to hunger and thirst and feast on those things rather than knowing the Word of God. Anything that you read outside of Scripture 
and, and spiritual books, theological books, devotionals, whatever you want to call it. And many of them are very good. Always check out the person that has written the book. Always check out the person that's written the book. You know, because the Holy Spirit does not contradict scriptures. And sometimes, many times, there's an agenda that's going on. You know, Jesus himself says that he only speaks what the Father is saying. He's only doing what the Father has directed him to do. You find this with the Holy Spirit, and you find this with Jesus. This is, this is the unity of the Trinity. They are never speaking on their own accord. John 5, 19, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. John 12, 49, for I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. John 14, 10, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. The Holy Spirit does not speak on his own. And when Jesus was here on earth, he did not speak on his own. They were in unity with the Father. They spoke what the Father said. They did They did and do what the Father directs them to do. They, we are, in the same way, submitted to the Holy Spirit. We should be submitted to the Father through the Holy Spirit. And we have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that teaches us how to live teaches us who the Father is. And we need to beware of false teaching. And if one of those things are missing, rather the lack of submission to the Holy Spirit or the Word of God, that is a red flag to us. We are to be submitted to the Holy Spirit. You know, I want to say a little bit about false teachings. Scripture says a lot, particularly in the New Testament, about false teaching. And one of the things that gets missed, and particularly in this day, is that false teaching, one of the identifying characteristics of false teachers is that there's an unhealthy interest in controversies and verbal disputes. This is scriptural. If you are listening, YouTubing, reading, whatever, and it may, it may be a person who proclaims themselves to be a Christian, but they have an unhealthy interest in controversies and verbal disputes, Scripture says they are a false teacher. So let's beware of that. That is attitudinal as well as what they're emphasizing and what they are uh, teaching about. 1 Timothy 6, 3-5. If someone spreads false teachings and does not agree with sound words, that is, those of Jesus Christ, and with the teaching that accords with godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in controversies and verbal disputes. This gives rise to envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant bickering by people corrupted in their minds and deprived of the truth who suppose that godliness is a way of making a profit. Let me say this. In our era of time, we have information all over the place. You can get it all over the internet. You can get it on YouTube. I have filled to the brim right now. It is important that we are in agreement with the Word of God, but not only agreement with the Word of God, but submitted to the Holy Spirit and a person that's stirring dissensions, a person that is emphasizing unhealthy disputes and arguments and creating controversy and division in the body of Christ because they're obsessed with these controversies. They're obsessed with some of this stuff that doesn't have anything to do with Scripture, but they have bled it into their lives and they are having people follow them in these disputes and controversies and divisions. This is a false teacher. This, according to 1 Timothy 6, is a false teacher. You know, false teaching also includes people that are manipulative and they are deceptive and their personal lives are a mess. They don't have fruit of the Spirit. They don't have fruit of the character of the Lord, the character of godliness in their personal lives. Matthew 17, 15, and 16, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Beware of false teachers. We have the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us into all truth. 
You know, false doctrine encourages rebellious spirits. False doctrine encourages ungodliness. False doctrine undermines scripture. And it says there's things wrong with scripture. False doctrine uh, challenges the deity of Christ. Beware of false doctrine. You have the spirit of truth. The teacher that God has given to you is the Holy Spirit and he will guide you into all truth. But you must be submitted to the Holy Spirit and be in his word so that you are not deceived by false doctrine and by these teachers that are trying to sway you into dissension, into division, into these things that are ungodly behavior for Christ followers. God bless you. Pray about this word.